Hello and welcome y'all. Today what we're going to do is we're going to make some keto bread, which is now a diet that's become extremely popular. And I'm shooting a video today and I thought I'd let you guys come in and take a watch. It can be kind of fun. Um, the thing with keto is you're training your body to stop using carbs as a fuel source and instead using fat, which is cool, especially when you're trying to lose weight. Um, so definitely something to think about. Gluten free, a lot of people just don't like eating gluten because it makes them feel bloated. So what's the one thing you can't ever have? Bread. So how cool would it be to make some bread that actually reminds you of bread and is delicious? And that's what the goal is today. Um, yesterday I gave this a go and I went very simplistic. I didn't use all the bread minded methods and what I ended up with was more of a biscuit which this is what I ended up with. It actually tastes really really good and you know when that's nice and warm can you imagine some steam coming out of that that was a delicious biscuit so I'm going to turn this into a biscuit some like gravy post so that'll be coming up pretty soon but for today we're going to make some keto bread um, I believe this turns out to be around one gram maybe two grams per slice I believe that's where it's at I'll do all the research and that stuff but we're not using any flours or anything like that this over here is almond flour, which is a really fine grain. Not the same as flour, it's a little bit thicker, it's got a little more texture to it. But it was made out of a nut, so go figure, right? Um, ingredients we've got, we've got eggs, we've got some sharp cheddar, no this is mild cheddar cheese, you can use sharp, whatever you guys like. Got some baking powder here, four tablespoons of some high quality butter, always use high quality butter please. And a cool ingredient that probably most people wouldn't expect, some pork rinds, which is Pure fat, pretty much, um, but provides a lot of flavor. You keto folks, this is your new breadcrumbs. Very cool, right? So, when making bread, what's one of the characteristics of bread? Well, a lot of times yeast is used. So what I did is I went ahead and bloomed some yeast. Uh, There's four tablespoons of water, and one teaspoon of dry active yeast, and a little bit of honey to activate it. Um, you guys usually are staying away from sugars and stuff like that, but honey is definitely one of them that's safe. And I only used about, I don't know, it was a, a little squirt, it wasn't very much, but whenever you're trying to get your yeast to activate, that's one of the important variables is the sugar, because that's what they eat and that's what gets them going. And this is going to provide lift in our bread, this is going to help it be lighter and fluffier, along with the baking soda and the eggs. So we've got three things that are helping us make this not be a dense piece of bread. So let's start. What we're going to do first here is we're going to take our eggs. And like I mentioned, I'm shooting a video too, so I've got to kind of do a few things here. It might look a little different, but I'll keep talking, talking to you guys through this. So here we go, getting our eggs going. We're going to get some egg whites into a bowl. And we're going to keep our yolks over there. It's always good to have an extra bowl in hand when you guys are cooking. I mean, you guys know that, but it's one of those things like whenever you need it, you're running for the sink to grab it or wherever it is. So, the littlest tips make the biggest difference sometimes. Sometimes when you're cooking, it's just a matter of seconds before something goes to completely start over land. Which is always a bummer, but that's part of training as a cook is getting better at those kind of things. And of course, like in everything in life, the more you practice, the better you get. Things becoming, you know, second nature, first nature, all that good stuff. So what we're going to do with these egg whites and why we're separating them is we're going to turn these egg whites into fluffy egg whites. So we're going to take them to like medium stiff peaks. And what that's going to do is whip air into the whites, which is also going to act as a leavening agent. It's going to cause them to lift. It's the same process that you would do when you're making a souffle, that's what it does it, the egg whites, which is cool. So the one thing I'm kind of worried, I'm like worried, that's not the right word, but one of the things I'm not perfectly sure about is using five versus six eggs. So I'm thinking moisture, deliciousness, the extra eggs, really is going to our friend, it's big time our friend, so washing my hands.
And this post should be on the website in a few days. Editing the video always takes a good bit of time. It's really surprising when editing these videos, by the time I'm done, there's just hundreds of edits that have happened. Let's see, everything going okay over here? Yes. Move my other camera monitor. I've got another camera back over here pointing at this direction. You guys can probably see this one. So I'm not going to use that. I'm going to use the electric guy. This is totally easy. I'll give you a tip quick. I'll use this actually for a second. I've mentioned this a time or two, but when you're whipping your egg whites, one of the things that's helpful is when you're whipping it, you let it fall back on itself versus doing this. This is going to take forever. If they're closer to room temperature, they whip a lot easier too. So by going like this, you're just using gravity, it's coming back down on itself and it forces it to incorporate air quicker, which this is a really good exercise in the kitchen. Um, there's a muscle on your forearm down here called the, whatever you call it, the hammer. That's where you get it from <laughs> doing this type of stuff. I guess you could say that's kind of a, you can see how much time a person spent in the kitchen by how much how big their, their hammer muscle is. So we got that going. Just so, don't sit here and watch me do this for I'm going to speed it up and let this get going. Sorry about the noise. So I have my oven preheated to 375. I think that's a safe number to work with. Um, I've seen breads all over the boards. Um, 375 seems like a pretty good safe one. So the egg whites are done. Now let's mix these guys up. There we go. I'm gonna just gonna beat these a little bit. Lightly start changing color. I'm going to get a little bit brighter color for it. And it just creates a smoother, more homogeneous mixture so that whenever I incorporate this, it runs better through everything. So we're making carb, you know, low carb bread, gluten free bread. Bread is never exactly what I would consider the easiest thing in the kitchen to make, but it's one of those dishes that when you make it, and you made it yourself, it's just better. It's amazing. I mean, who doesn't want bread? <laughs> so we got this. To this, we're going to go ahead and we're going to add our butter. It's melted and it's not hot anymore. That's another thing to think about. Because if we put really hot butter in here, what's going to happen? It's going to scramble and that's not going to be good. So that's important. See how much more velvety and smooth that became? Very cool. So we've got this is one tablespoon, one tablespoon of baking powder. Make sure it's baking powder, not baking soda. Um, they're both leavening agents, but one of the things about baking soda is it's got five times the leavening power of baking powder. So it needs to be used in the right application, or else no good. So here's our activated yeast, here's our activated yeast, and one of the things I'm going to do, a little different here, is I'm just going to add 
the actual bloomed yeast instead of all the extra water at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scrape it off the top just like that and get it in there. That way I don't add all this extra moisture to the bread and I can hold this back now and adjust how wet the dough is going to be in a moment. And this is the good stuff, so got our yeast in there. See how nice and thick that is and essentially how nice and thick and delicious this will be coming. Okay, next. We're going to do the pork grinds. Just crush them up in your hands. Good way to get it started. Take something like that. Crush them up. Pretty much give them as small as you can. This is certainly not required ingredient. It just is very keto. So I wanted to throw a, a little something cool to the keto side of this. Good old pork grinds. One of the things cool about becoming keto is you can eat all the fat you want, really. You know, I mean, all, obviously in, in moderation. Don't go after trans fats all the time. You know, like avocado is your best friend. I wrote a really good article actually on avocado on my website talking about the health benefits and why and all that kind of stuff. I'll add a link to this video later down in the comments. Uh, and I'll probably post it to the Butter and Time Facebook page anyway. Just is such a good one. So, let's just take a moment. You could obviously put this in a food processor and really turn it into fine powder. If you do that, make extra if you're a keto person because you can use it as breadcrumbs and stuff like that or a binding agent and other recipes. I'm going to be doing a salmon croquette soon and I'm going to use this as a binding agent instead of breadcrumbs, which is totally cool. worth taking your time on because you don't want a big chunk of this just hanging out in the middle of the bread. So food processor is what I'll suggest on the recipe on the website, which is also printable and you can save it too. If you guys set up a big oven account, let's go to bigoven.com, you can start saving all of our recipes there. So once you're on the actual link on butterandtime.com, when you look at the recipe card, usually in the middle or at the bottom, there's a button. I'll say print and save. You click the save button, boom, putting on Big Oven. Big Oven's free, but it's an easy way to collect all of our recipes instead of having to come back all the time and things like that. Coming back's always cool too. You can always just bookmark the sites. Alright, that's pretty good because we're going to add it to some moisture. So that's about where we ended up. Pretty close to good. Get that in the heel. I guess I'll measure this out too. It's always good. So what I'm gonna do is I want to keep a tablespoon. Two heaping tablespoons. Three tablespoons. Four. Five. Five seems pretty good. So guys, this is how you create recipes. You, you try something and sometimes it works the first time, sometimes it doesn't. You gotta sit on it, think about it, why does this not work? And then go to town. So delicious cheese. Who doesn't want some cheese? Put that in there. Flour. 
Now, almond flour does come in different coarseness, like I was mentioning a little bit earlier. They have almond meal and almond flour, so be careful if you guys go shop for that. So this is two cups. I'm going to start adding it and check how we're doing. I'm going to add half of it first and incorporate it. first roundabout is going to be pretty much just liquid. It's not going to stay fluffy and all that kind of stuff, which is how it goes. So I'm guessing that adding the extra yeast water I was talking about holding back is going to end up being a good idea, just by looking at where we're at so far. So the cheese has a bit of a saltiness to it, all right? So I'm not inclined to add salt to this the first time, because I don't want it to be too salty. But as the recipe comes out and we get to taste it. All right, folks, this is the big moment. So let's say fingers crossed. This look good. Oh yeah. Oops, sorry about that. But you know, that's bread. It's soft got airiness on the inside. It does not feel like cornbread. It feels soft. So for a quick bread is what this would be. We've had success. So what are the alter what are the what else can be done here to make this fluffier? Well whenever we added the yeast I'm in a very small area guys sorry. Whenever the yeast is added the yeast blooms, we add it in there. When you're making real bread, like you're doing a standard bread procedure, there's 12 steps. I can outline them on the, on the internet one day. But one of them is allowing your bread to proof. Or as Jacques Papin liked to say, mochelet de proof. 
and proofing is just where that yeast gets a real chance to activate and do its job, which is you know doubling in size essentially when you're making normal floured breads. It'll poof up and get huge, and then you punch it down, which is called the punch down, and then you shape them into what you want them to look like, and then you let it proof a second time, and it gets even bigger, which is really cool. So you start with something small, and it just gets huge. It's one of the cool things about making bread. So that would be the next level, is allowing it to proof. So I'm going to have to do that too, which is no problem. I will do it, and uh, I'll report back to you guys on that. But, you know, it's a pretty beautiful day here in Austin, Texas. And I hope you guys enjoyed this, and there will be many more to come. So you guys take care. All the information will be on the link. Please go ahead and subscribe. Come check us out on social media. I have all of our links below. You guys have the best.